In early 2018, the release of Villainous from designer Prospero Hall, a pseudonym for the Forest Prison Creative Group, and Ravensburger set a new standard for what to expect from a game based on a licensed IP. For years, games based on licenses had been just a vehicle for the license, but not necessarily something really good. Villainous sort of threaded the needle of being based on the IPs, but delivering something enjoyable for a wide range of players. Each player would represent a Disney villain from a particular movie, and you would try to use the allies and items and different effects and all sorts of different things custom to your movie to implement your master plan. And whichever villain did this first won the game. You had a fate deck, which consisted of heroes and different things that would try to thwart you, and other players could call upon fate to sick these items against you. So each character was isolated in its own world, and yet you would compete against one another in a race to implement your master plan first. In early 2019, Robinsberger released the Wicked to the Core expansion, which was a standalone game with three new characters that could just be used on its own or you can mix and match with anyone in the base game. In July 2019, now we have Evil Comes Prepared, a new standalone expansion along the same model as Wicked to the Core. This is a two to three player standalone game that can be played on its own or mixed in any way with either of the other sets. The villains, featured in this box, as you can see on the cover. Scar takes the main stage. The other two characters are Isma from The Emperor's New Groove and Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. And as before, each character has their own deck, their own player board, their own special things that they need to do in order to win the game. Here are most of the components for Villainous Evil Comes Prepared. Each character has their own player board, which has four locations customized to their world. They have a figure that starts on one of those locations. You have your winning conditions spelled out on the side, along with your personalized deck and the fate deck specific for you. There's also some player tokens that I am just putting on the side for now. And each villain has its own guide to tell you how to play. Because initially when you start playing, you don't know what you need to do. So with Scar to win, he has to have 15 points of strength in the succession pile. And if you look on this board, there is no succession pile. You have no idea what you have to do initially, but what you must do first is find Mufasa and then eliminate him. And if you do, you start the succession pile with him. Right, you've taken out the king. You're trying to take charge as king. So Mufasa has to go first. He has six strength. You put him aside in the succession pile. And any hero you defeat after that will be added to the succession pile until you get 15 strength and win. If you defeat someone before Mufasa, then those cards are displaced in the discard pile because you just scare them off. You haven't done anything permanently bad to them. But once Mufasa is out, you are headed for victory. At least that's what you hope. Your allies are primarily hyenas, as you might expect, and the hyenas get more strength as you pile them up in particular spaces. They work best in packs. Radigan has a different strategy. He is trying to find the robot queen. The queen will come into play in the secret lair. You must move the queen over to Buckingham Palace. And that sounds relatively straightforward. However, you have one robot queen in your deck. You have lots of other items to try to help find the queen. And the queen has a cost of 15, which is a huge amount of power to pay in order to put her into play. But if you put gears in the play, you can lower the cost. You have other cards that will help you save power. You can uh, pull out uh, an ally that's going to get Flaversham, who will go up into the secret lair, and he will lower the cost as well. Everything will work towards lowering the cost so that then you can help move the Robot Queen over to Buckingham Palace and win. To stop you, opponents can pull out the Mouse Queen, which just means you can't win while the Mouse Queen is in play. The opponents can also pull out Basil. If they can't find Basil immediately, they can call for help, which will pull Basil out of the deck and into play. And when he's played, you can discard one item from his location. So if the Robot Queen is already in play and Basil comes down, you can remove the Robot Queen, discard it from play. And once that happens, your goal changes to 
defeating Basil. That's all that matters from that point. If Basil never comes out, then move the queen on to Buckingham Palace to win. There's lots of other cards in the deck. I will ignore most of them and focus on the main thing, the winning condition. For Isma, you need to defeat Kuzco with Kronk. So Kronk is one character in your deck, so you're trying to find him. Unlike most allies, if you use Kronk to vanquish a hero, normally the allies go away. They go in your discard pile and you have to build them up again. The hyenas come and go. All your ruffians will come and go. But Kronk stays around and you have to find Kuzco in order to win. However, some complications, Kronk will build up power when he moves and Kronk has to be in the same row as Kuzco in order to win. The fate deck works a little differently for Yzma. You divide it up into four piles of four instead of having this pile of 15 and those four piles of four will be placed in the rows and then Yzma has to find Kuzco in one of these rows and if, when you do, you pull him out and put him in that same row. And different fate cards can allow the opponents to shuffle those decks together so that you lose information. You're trying to pull things out of play in order that you can't find anything. And as people might expect, there, you know, there are two wrong lever cards. And if Yzma happens to reveal the wrong lever card, then she loses half her power. Haha. -ha. That's a super quick overview of Evil Comes Prepared. I've played only one so far with all three of the new characters in a three-player game. The rules state that Scar is the easiest to play, Yzma is the most difficult, and you can definitely see that happen as you're playing out the game. I was Radigan, so I was right in the middle in terms of difficulty. Scar is fairly straightforward. Pile up your hyenas, you've got special cards that will let you dig through the fate deck and find heroes and put them into play. So if Mufasa is not showing up, and of course, if the whole goal of Scar is to find Mufasa and kill him and then kill more heroes, why would the opponents use fate against Scar? Because effectively you're possibly pulling Mufasa out into play. Well, Scar has plans for that. Be prepared. Uh, while we were playing, one of the players pulled out the Lion King soundtrack and that was running in the background, so Be Prepared was ringing through my head the whole time. But Be Prepared helps you dig through the Fate deck and pull Mufasa out. And if you've already eliminated Mufasa, then you can pull out other heroes that you will hopefully pile up on top of him. It's very really grim, grim when you describe it that way. You want to pile up all the bodies. Ugh. Yes, very family friendly. You, you can clean it up when you describe it to children. Don't, don't tell them that way. But the fate deck also has things that will strengthen all the other heroes. Uh, you'll have prophecy cards, you'll have Hakuna Matata, which will come out and then mess up the plans of Scar. So there's lots of different things that you can do. You can pull things back from the discard or from the secession pile. So I guess they're not actually dead unless you have a zombie Teemo running around. Radigan, it's all about finding the robot queen and building up the power beforehand. So you're trying to dig through the deck, use the discard powers as much as you can in order to find that queen. But if you need a lot of power when you finally find it in order to do anything. And so it's similar to Ursula where you have to dig for the trident and just keep cycling through and find things. Yzma is kind of the same way where you have to find Kronk and then put him out and then hopefully keep him. So Kronk builds up power on him as I started to say before, he doesn't go away when you use him to remove a hero. He sticks around. But if you move Kronk from location to location, you put power on him, and when he gets enough power, he turns against you. He becomes a hero fighting against you, which means you then need to eliminate him, go put him in the discard pile, and then pull him back out again. So it's a very roundabout process where you have to try to move Kronk as little as possible while finding Kuzco and then possibly moving him around while your opponents are messing with you. So 
We played this game the way I prefer, which is we didn't look through everything ahead of time. We didn't know what cards we were looking for. It made it much harder for Yzma, I think, just because that player did not know what to expect. It's a very different feel where you've got four cards in front of, four piles in front of you, and you're trying to pull the right things out of that pile and remember what's in each pile for this game that you've never played before. He had not played any of the villainous titles, so this is all brand new to him. It was tough. He he looked like he was on the verge of victory, having Kronk there. I knew Kuzco was in the same pile because I had looked previously at it. And I went digging randomly, found a card, and I was able to shuffle him away. Problem solved. Scar looked like he was building up. He had Mufasa out. He started digging through the fate pile. Got Mufasa. Mufasa I was taken out. And he started building up others, but we were able to bring creatures back. Kept pulling out prophecies uh, added Rafiki stick onto an animal so that when you fought it you had to get rid of the stick first and then the animal would still survive the out the hero would still survive able to hold off scar until Radigan was able to bring the robot queen to Buckingham Palace and win so first victory on a review copy of villainous evil comes repaired the game is scheduled to be released July 19th at the Target retail chain in the U.S. and then available more broadly at other stores at the beginning of September 2019. There you go. Ah, Mufasa. <laughs>